Welcome back to Excelling in Christ, the podcast for those that are deadly serious about walking in the footsteps of Jesus. I'm talking about people who are eager to take up their cross. Being lukewarm is not even an option. They wouldn't even think about it. They want to go that straight and narrow way. That's the people this podcast is for. Now, how do you tell the difference between those people and that whole other group of people that are kind of just like, meh, about Christianity. Well, one difference is those people that are serious about following Christ dig into the Scriptures. They want some book, chapter, and verse answers. They want Bible. They're looking for ink on the page. They want to get as close to Jesus as possible. And so they embrace the narrow way. They don't whine and cry about the narrow way. There are that Psalms 122 and verse 1 where David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Those are the people that are trying to excel in Christ and improve their game and get better and better day by day. And obviously, the straight and narrow way doesn't appeal to some folks. So in their attempt to make the narrow way real broad, wide, and comfortable, and easy to travel, one of their tactics, and this is the focus of this podcast, one of their tactics is to dismiss any challenge to their liberalism as just saying, well, that's, that's just your opinion. And then they just brush you off and ignore you. Well, look, this can be a little bit tricky because some things are a matter of opinion. Not everything, though, is a matter of opinion. There are some rock-solid lines in the Bible that have been drawn, and you don't cross them. Now, for example, you could take that list of sin begins in Romans 1 28 or then other list that begins in 1 Corinthians 6 9 and there's another list in Galatians 5 19 and those aren't matters of opinion those are rock solid lines and the people that practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of God and the Bible says that word for word folks that is not a matter of interpretation that is a matter of simply reading the direct statement in Scripture. It is that easy. Now look, I don't wish anybody any harm. We don't want anybody to be lost. We want everybody to get to heaven. But the fact is, there are people out there who twist the Scriptures to their own destruction. Now we've been warned about that. Second Peter 3.16 talked about those people who twist the Scriptures to their own destruction. And we've got to realize who those are and some of the telltale signs of who those people are and run from them. We don't want to be entangled with them and be brought down with them. And one of the things they do is dismiss every challenge to their liberal theology as, well, that's just their opinion. No, a lot of stuff is not opinion. I'd say the majority of it is not opinion. It is book, chapter, verse. It is directly stated in the Word of God, and there are just some lines we do not cross. Now, in a general sense, Christ told us that, Matthew 7, 21, where he said only those that do the will of the Father enter the kingdom of heaven. In Galatians 1, 6-9, Paul said, If we or an angel preach any other gospel than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Look, everything doesn't fall into the interpretation category. That's just self-deception. That's all that is. That is self-indulgence, and that kind of people, those kind of thoughts will not help you excel in Christ. If you're going to excel in Christ, then you learn what is solid, where it is anchored in that Bible, and you embrace it and you respect it because it is the Word of God. It's not just a matter of interpretation. So let's turn our attention a second to 2 Timothy 2.15. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. Again, it's not all just a matter of personal interpretation. Paul said we're to present ourselves approved to God. Now, there's a lot right there. You present yourself. You make an effort. You work really hard to present yourself approved to God. A workman, in the Greek, a workman is somebody who works for a wage, incidentally. You work to present yourself, not needing to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word or accurately handling the word. The translation is very little bit, but there is a right way to handle the word, and there is a wrong way to handle the word. It's not all just interpretation. And so we, we begin in Christ, we're babes, and we start to grow. And it's not surprising that we make some mistakes along the way. We misunderstand some things along the way because we start as 
Paul would say, babes in Christ. So we start learning, we start growing, and we keep correcting as we grow, as we climb higher up that mountain. And when we make a mistake, we go, look, I was wrong. No big deal. It's part of the growing process. But some people are so spoiled, they can't face the fact that they were wrong, and they just have to dismiss all of their shortcomings and everything they did wrong is just, well, that, that was just his interpretation. It, it's amazing. They would rather fail than learn and really grow spiritually. I, I can't understand that. I mean, the growing process is the growing process, and we learn by making mistakes, and then we learn from our failures, and we move on. But we have a set of people out there who can't accept that. No, 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 they, they couldn't make a mistake. And so they just dismiss anybody that challenges them as having their own opinion, and they continue in their error, never giving it a second thought, because they would rather do that and fail eternally than admit they were wrong and grow spiritually. Wow. Now, there's another group we need to consider for just a moment, and no, neither, no nice way to say it. It's just the lazy people. There are some people out there who are just spiritually lazy. Now, I'll let you decide what percent of the population that is, but I believe it's more than just a few percent. Well, they don't want to put any effort into studying the Bible. They have this crazy idea that the preacher's supposed to do all their study for them. And while a preacher can be helpful, a preacher can be extremely detrimental also. Each and every single one of us needs to learn the Word of God firsthand with our own eyes, with our own mind, with our own heart, so that there is no one between us and Jesus, no one between us and God. Again, I like Bible teachers. I'm a preacher. I think we have a place, but our place is not between the individual disciple and Jesus. Our place is beside, assisting if we can, but definitely not between. And certainly we don't follow just our own heart. When you learn the scriptures, then you learn Proverbs 28, 26, where he said, if you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. And then we got these people that claim they have some kind of special inner guidance because it's easy. Again, they're just lazy. Let's, let's just call it like it is. And Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but that is the way of death. If the Spirit is leading somebody, he's going to lead them along the same line. He wrote the Word of God, and he said, the Word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. God is not the author of confusion. He is not going to tell three people three different things. He has one message. He is God. Now, that's where we stand. So if you want to excel in Christ, and I certainly hope you do, then that progress is not going to be based on hunches, but rather it's going to be based on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, as Christ referred to in Matthew 4.4. 4. But, but I get it. You've got lazy people out there. They don't want to stop playing their video games and doing the things that indulge the lust of the flesh. And so they, they just want this broad, easy feel it within, fuzzy, nebulous, something or another. And they don't want to have to go and dig into scriptures to seek God. Now, look, that's their choice. Don't wish them any harm, but I don't believe that's going to work. I believe the Bible condemns that just straight out. Now, we need to talk about another piece of the puzzle for a moment because there's, there's a lot of aspects to this, and we're not going to cover them all, of course. Following emotionalism, uh, that thinks so, just that mere want to, that is so much easier than having to learn the Bible and study the Bible and figure it out from cover to cover and get the flow of it and the message of it. And it, it does all start coming together in time. But a lot of folks just don't want to put in the time. They, they want a quick, easy answer, and that's what emotionalism does for you. And it's kind of crazy because we'll spend 12 years just to get a high school diploma, We'll spend another two to four years to get just an average college degree. We'll spend another four to eight years on top of that to get advanced degrees. And we understand that you have to put in the time when we're talking about those kind of academics. But for some reason, when we're talking about the Word of God, we think we ought to get to memorize one verse, John 3.16, which is a great verse, and be done with it. And then we can just feel our way blindly to heaven. No, emotionalism is not the way to do it. That is the road to hell. That is self-deception. Now, people can play religion. Jesus talked about them. They say in the day of judgment, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, did many wonders in your name. They, they felt like they were doing the right thing. 
and he'll declare to them that he never knew them. That's Matthew 7, 22 and 23. You can look at the church of Sardis in Revelation 3, 1. They had a name that they were alive. So the, the local interpretation, if you would, was that was one good church. That was really an alive church. They were spiritual people on target. But if you look at the scripture in Revelation 3, 1, Jesus said, no, they were dead. You can do the same thing with the Laodicean church in Revelation starts at 3.14. They were lukewarm. They were very self to prove. Their interpretation of themselves was that they were rock solid. They didn't have anything to worry about. And Jesus said, look, you don't even understand. You're naked and you're blind and you need some help. And that's the problem when we just dismiss everything and say, well, that's just interpretation. Then there is no truth. And it's a challenge to get people to stand up to man up, to be real men and real women and own the Word of God and say, I will follow Jesus instead of my emotionalism. So that, that's hard. That, that's what we're up against. People can twist and spin and distort and dismiss everything they don't like as a matter of opinion. It's a very flippant attitude. They will mock and ridicule those people who really diligently study the Bible. But the fact is, it's only those who diligently seek God that get rewarded by God. Now, that's straight up Scripture again. That's Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Go look at it. It starts out with faith that's impossible to please God, and it ends with He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So those of us who are really conservative, we need to take courage and not let the liberal-minded people discourage us. There is a rock-solid basis for those who get into heaven and those who don't. Jesus said it very directly when he said in John 12, 48, the words that he spoke will judge us in the last day. And those are not just all a matter of interpretation. The bottom line is it's not all a matter of opinion. All roads don't lead to heaven. I know you're not supposed to say that. It's not politically correct. But Jesus said the only people that get into heaven are those who do the will of the Father. Jesus said no one comes to the Father except through him. That's John 14 and verse 6. So in this podcast, in this whole series of podcasts, I want to encourage you to embrace the narrow road. Be one of the few that find it because Jesus said straight and narrow is the way and few there be who find it. I want you and me to be one of the few. So you hold on to that Bible. It's your map. You read it. You learn it. You follow it. And understand we can't trust everybody. <laughs> we cannot trust everybody who holds up a Bible and claims to be following it. Paul said in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen that the devil himself would appear as an angel of light. It's no wonder that his ministers also appear as these wonderful loving guys and they're not. So let me wind up this little podcast with the bottom line. You can know the truth. John 8, 32, Christ said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is not all just a matter of interpretation. If everything is a matter of interpretation, then there is no basic foundation. There is no truth, and Jesus lied. I don't know about you, but I don't think Jesus lied. I think he knew exactly what he was talking about. So I'm going to warn you about the false prophets and Peter warned us about the false prophets. They've always been there, and they're secretly trying to introduce heresy into the teaching. So look at 2 Peter 2, 1. Look at 2 Peter 3, 16. Look at those warnings taken to heart. And when somebody starts trying to dismiss Scripture as just somebody's opinion, you know you need to be careful. You're up against somebody who's up to no good. Don't fall for those clever lies and those clever lies. That they, they can pretend all they want, that it's a matter of opinion. But you and I know better because we choose to listen to Jesus. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the little podcast. If you did and you find it helpful, share it wherever you do your social media. And as always, I hope you have a great day.